Hello again, it is me and Derek Robbins from Tomcat Gas Training and uh, welcome to this video on the sequence of operations for combination boilers. But before we get into this video, please could you take some time to subscribe because it helps the channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell because we want YouTube to tell you when we're uploading videos. Mondays and Wednesdays? Anyway, done enough waffling, so let's get on with it and find out what the sequence of operation is and how it will help us to diagnose faults on boilers. Now, what do we mean by sequence of operation? Well, basically, if we look at central heating first, it's when you turn your programmer on or turn your room set up and it's that sequence then what the boiler has to go through to fire up to make your radiators nice and hot. Or it's when you turn that hot tap on, it's a sequence the boiler then has to go through to warm your water up. So first thing we're going to do is, we're going to go into the workshop and we're going to go through the sequence of operation first for central heating. So let's have a look at this boiler and let's see if you can tell which component on the boiler turns on first? Come on then, let's go and have a look then. Now, what we're going to be doing is looking at the general sequence of operation for combi boilers. And we're going to be using this boiler. This is an old Glowworm CI atmospheric combi boiler. It's not pre-mixed, but even the pre-mixed pretty much go through the same sequence, they just some of them don't have the same components. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to turn it on and then you can listen to see what you think is the first component that comes on in the sequence. So got it turned on at the plug, got it turned on on the timer, I'm just going to turn it on at uh, the on off switch and let's see if you can hear what comes on first. So that's called the pre-purge mode. And now you can see the burner is lit. Let's turn it off. Oh, my face melts. So, that was the boiler turning on in central heating mode. So what did you think was the first one to turn on? Let's go and have a look at the board and let's find out what was the first component that turned on. Now, did you say it was the fan? What was the first thing to turn on on that boiler? Well, you'd be wrong. <laughs> Because it was actually the pump is the first thing that uh, turns on. So let's have a look and see what this sequence actually is. So you can see we start at standby mode. And then we've got demand via the timer or the room stat. Once we've made the demand for the room stat, the pump comes on. But when the pump comes on, in this model, it's using a pump proving switch or a low water pressure switch to actually make sure that we've got water in there. Now this boiler, it's uh, pump proving switch does three things. It actually does prove that the pump is moving. It does prove that there's water in the system and it also tells you on the front display what the pressure of the water is. So the proving switch on this one does three things. So a lot of other boilers just have a standard low water pressure sensor. Um, but this one, it does three things. Let's get back to it. So after it's done the pump proving switch, it then checks the air pressure switch has got power between common and normally closed. Now, <laughs> if it didn't do it this way round, check it between common and normally closed, and it checked it between common and normally open before anything happened, then it knows you bypassed the air pressure switch. 
and it's a safety device, the air pressure switch. It tells the boiler that the fan is running, so it doesn't do anything. So it won't move on in any other sequence because it knows you've bypassed it. Now some of the air pressure switches have three connections on, some have two. Um, we used to then have a little piece of metal which we had a little rubber boot over the end when they stopped using one of them. And now it's gone completely on the later models. Um, this one has only got two connections. So um, that's what it does then after it's proved there's water in the system. So it then checks and makes sure the air pressure switch hasn't been disconnected or bypassed. Let's continue and see what the next bit is. So after it's checked the air pressure switch, it then makes the diverter valve move if it needs to. It then brings the fan on at kind of the same time and then once the fan comes on, it then checks the air pressure switch between the common and the normally open. So it's checked the air pressure switch twice now. It's checked to make sure at the beginning you had bypassed it and now it's checking that the fan's working. So the air pressure switch is quite an important part of the sequence of operation. Let's see what's next. So after the air pressure switch has been checked, it then quickly checks the overheat stat and the thermistors to make sure it can then go into the ignition process. It then sends power for ignition and it sends power to the spark electrode and opens the gas at the same time. So within milliseconds of each other this is all happening because you've just seen that on the uh, a little bit further on at the beginning of the video, you could see this all happens so quickly, it's in bloody milliseconds. So it's sent power up to the spark electrode, it's now igniting, it's opened the gas valve, but it's opened the gas valve in low rate, it's then going to light. It then sends, as it burns across, the heat over to flame rectification, and the flame rectification then um, knows it's lit because it's changed its ions from um, AC to DC and back to the board so it now knows it's lit and the gas has gone right across. So what's next in the process? So after it's done its flame ionisation process it then opens the gas valve and then it controls the gas valve via its thermistors. And then the boiler runs in central heating mode. So you can see now, once it gets satisfied, the burner then turns off, but then the boiler continues to run with the fan running and the pump running. And what it does then is, it gets rid of any unburnt gas out of the combustion chamber, and it also has the pump running to get rid of any residual heat out of the heat exchanger. So it's not wasting heat, and also it doesn't get any thermal shock when it fires up. So that's the sequence of operation for when it goes into central heating mode. So let's check and see what it does when it goes into hot water mode. Now let's have a look at the hot water mode. So got my time clock turned off and I turn the boiler on. We'll go through its pre-purge first because it always purges to allow any unburnt gas out of the heat exchanger first. That's from initial turning it on or when it's working. So I've now turned it on. I'm not calling for any heat because it's turned off. It's now waiting for the tap to be turned on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the tap on and let's see it, what uh, happens with turning the tap on. It's just behind you so I'm going to do that. So 
So you saw the sequence was a little bit different there, and you also saw the burner, I don't know whether you noticed or not, went actually higher than it did for central heating. So let's go to the board and let's find the sequence out for when we turn it into hot water. Now then, there's just some subtle differences between the central heating and the hot water in the sequence of operation. So let's have a look here and you'll be able to see these little differences. So first of all, the flow turbine. So it's the flow turbine and opening the tap what makes everything activate here. So when you turn the tap on, we get a flow then going through into the boiler, through the plate heat exchanger, and then out from the tap from your cold water mains. And it's this action which allows the Hulse effect sensor to be activated by a magnet spinning on a paddle, or a little, easiest way to explain it's like a little uh, mouse wheel. <laughs> so when it spins round, there's a magnet on the little wheel, magnet on the Hall effect sensor, it senses that it's spinning, it then sends it into the hot water mode. And as you can see here, it does pretty much this all at the same time as making the pump and the pump proving and the fan and the air pressure switch coming on. So once it's now starting to flow through the hot water, Thermistor works now regulating the burner and making sure the hot water doesn't go too hot. Once the tap is closed again now, this is where it changes at the bottom here. So at the bottom you can see, once the tap is closed, everything shuts down. So the fan stops virtually instantly and there's no pump overrun. So that's the major subtle differences between the central heating and the hot water. So the central heating is worked from the time clock and the hot water is worked from you turning the tap on. It's as simple as that. Once you understand the sequence of operation, it will help massively when it comes to fault finding with boilers. Now, not every boiler is the same. Not every boiler works and has exactly the same components in. But this gives you an idea of most boilers now, whether it's an old one or a new one, the sequence of operation. So if you've liked this video, why don't you give me that thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If you're not subscribed to my channel, then please subscribe because it helps. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because you know we release uh, videos on Mondays and Wednesdays. All I've got left to say is, Thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one guys. Cheers.